For your class three PowerPoint, we are going to be talking about learning styles and how you can utilize learning styles for deep and lasting learning. The quote for today is, imagine with all your mind, believe with all your heart, and achieve with all your might. Think for a moment. A moment. If you imagine your dreams with all of your mind, and then you believe in those dreams, and then work incessantly to achieve your dreams, what you would be capable of. Today's video is what do you want to be remembered for? And I encourage you to watch this video. It's quite inspiring and hopefully it'll keep you motivated um, throughout this journey this semester. We begin with a little memory test and I want you to take as you're going through your PowerPoint two minutes to view this slide. And at the end of the two minutes, click off the slide and see how many of those items from the slide you can come up with. I believe there's 21. So you're trying to come up with all 21. Now what you'll probably find is you'll come up with about anywhere between 10 and 15 maybe. And it's from a lack of experience with the information. So we're going to talk and we're going to go back to that slide here later about how to develop different learning styles to encourage deep and lasting learning. So as we look at um, our neurons or as we look at our brain, these, these cell bodies called neurons um, are actually responsible for our learning. So the first picture is our neurons before learning and you'll notice they're just separate bodies. Um, when we have this learning experience, we have these electrical fires between these neurons that create these connections. And if your neurons fire just once, your learning is going to be weak. But through repetitive firing of neurons, you will form these new memory traces. And that's when you really develop deep, lasting learning for material. Um, there are three very important principles to learning. Um, these three important principles are prior learning, quality of processing, and quantity of processing. If you think about prior learning, it's information that you can relate to this new information. So information you already know, something you have previously learned, and then how can that be related to your new subject area. Then you have quality of processing. There's This is just utilizing different um, learning avenues, different tools to develop deep learning. And then finally, finally, it's quantity of processing, frequent practice. And, and this is over a course of time, not cramming the information in the night before a test. So again, prior learning, quality of learning, and quantity of learning. With prior learning, a great example is in 2008, I bought my first smartphone. I bought an Apple cell phone. At that point, I had no idea how to operate a smartphone. So I was pretty slow and quite clumsy with my phone. It took me forever to do anything, create an email, write a text. In 2013, though, I switched from an Apple phone to a Samsung. Now, though it's a different operating system, I was able to draw on my previous experience with my Apple phone to gain quick knowledge and to be able to transition quite quickly to this new Samsung phone. So I had prior learning of the material. Uh, the other one, the next concept is that quality of processing. And that's really how you study. And this will strengthen um, those neural connections in your brain. Um, you you know, you will have to memorize a lot of things in college, but you'll find that the most effective and learning for you will occur through deep processing of information, utilizing different types of learning styles to really process that information so that it lasts. And I consider this cross training your brain using different tools to get the results you're looking for. And then finally, we're talking about quantity of processing, and that's just touching the material as often as possible. So, you know, whether you're reading your notes one night, taking or, or revising your notes, or rewriting your notes the next night, the more you see the information, the more you will learn and the more um, impact on those neural connections that will be made. Uh, so, it brings us back to the slide with the pictures. 
This time I want you to try a different quality of processing. This time create a, a story that correlates these pictures together. So take two minutes to come up here with a story that connects the pictures and at the end of the two minutes click off the slide and write as many as you can. My guess is you'll find that you have now written more items than your previous um, time viewing the information. Two things have happened. You've utilized a new quality of processing, but you're also uh, gaining a quantity of processing. You've now seen that slide twice versus just the single time um, initially. Now we're going to progress forward and we're going to talk about the core learning system. Core is an acronym for collect, organize, rehearse, and evaluate. When you're studying, you're going to begin by collecting information. You're collecting data through your textbooks, you're collecting them through lectures in class, um, through a multitude of um, opportunities you're gaining this information. You're utilizing all your senses to gain this information as well. So you've collected the information. Now it's important that you organize it to help you make sense of the information. Uh, you will need to have an organized system that works for you, that makes sense to you so that you can draw on that information when needed. And through developing this meaningful collection of data and organizing it, it will help your studying. Then we're going to rehearse the data. We are going to go over our information multiple times. We're going to have that quantity of processing. We're going to strengthen those neural networks so that we have deep and lasting learning. And then ultimately, we're going to be evaluated on this information. So hopefully, if we've done the first three steps of CORE, collecting, organizing, rehearsing well, then we will do extremely well on the evaluation piece. Clicking back now again to our memory test slide, you have the opportunity for a third time to look at this slide and once again try to memorize as many of those same um, items. Again, this hits on that quantity of processing. The more you see it, the more you will remember. So again, you're going to look at it for two minutes, click off the slide, and come up with as many of the items as you can. Um, there is going to be a preferred learning style test on the next slide. And what you're going to be doing is a little mini assessment to figure out what learning style best suits you. And through knowing which best, which learning style best suits you, you can employ different um, elements of that learning style to help you maximize your overall educational experience. So some people are visual learners. They like to see information. Others are oral learners. They have to hear it. So maybe they read out loud to themselves. They like lecture. They learn a lot from listening to others speak. Some are reading and writing learners. They have to write things down and then read it back to really develop an understanding of it. And then you have that kinesthetic learner that utilizes really um, all of their senses to develop themselves as a learner. So here is your preferred learning style assessment. Um, it's 14 questions, and you're really just going to go through and circle or write the letter of which, whether it is um, V, R, K, or A. Um, and then you're going to calculate the, the total number of each to um, decide which one you have the most of. And whichever area, whether it's visual, oral, reading, and writing, or kinesthetic has the most um, answers, then that is your area of strength when it comes to learning styles. So then on the next slide, you can utilize which learning style is your strength and key on what you need to be doing in class, when studying, and during your exams to maximize your overall success as a student. That's it for the learning styles portion in Class 3 PowerPoint. Again, if you have any questions, please email me, um, and I will um, get back to you as soon as possible. Um, hopefully, these little videos are helpful as they coincide with the PowerPoints. Have a great day.